Nice. Well, first off, welcome everyone. Come on in. Flood the fucking gates. Brian, Mark, welcome to episode 329. Come on in, everyone. Share the broadcast. Like, I got a couple announcements. Uh, first things first, I hope you like my nice brand new background. You like it? It's white. It's pretty. It's sexy. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. The bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. smell? Can you smell the sick fucking gains? I think you can. I think you can. Well, what's going on, peeps? Come on in. Make sure you share this broadcast because we're getting into the Flex Friday nitty gritty. We're getting into some big lifts for big arms and what those important lifts are and why they're important uh, to grow muscles that you might not think are being targeted. So let's jump right into it and begin. Now, first off, first off, I don't know if it's the app Share this broadcast, tag someone, get some people in here. It's Friday, and I'm about to drop some knowledge nukes. So show, show, show some fucking respect to Papa Swolio, and let's get some people in here. I'm not sure where everyone's going. I'm gonna have to do one of those rage episodes again, because people are fucking slacking. And if you're slacking, we're all part of the community together. We're all part of the community together, so you're all responsible. You're all responsible for the gains. Gotta fix these glasses. Yeah, Scotty, Scotty. What's going on? Willkommen, come on in. Welcome everyone to episode 329 of the Daily Mother Swole, the most muscular podcast in the realm, because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. Everything K2 flexing on you. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 329 every day at 12 noon Eastern time right here on Facebook at Swolnormous. Thanks for watching on YouTube at Swolnormous. And also you can catch every single episode on the podcast platforms, SoundCloud and iTunes. So you can listen to every episode of Daily Swole or you can watch it on YouTube along with all my other videos, my vlog series, exercise videos, driving while gaining tons of shit on YouTube. But you can catch it every day here live at 12 noon Eastern time right here on Facebook. Just another further announcement. Um, I'm going to make a post here on Facebook, but Kegel shirts, whoop, you can't see it in my beard. I know it's backwards on Facebook Live, but Kegel shirts, men's t-shirts and women's racerback tanks are now available on the Swolnormous Apparel Shop. So make sure uh, that you check that out. If you're a member of Swolnormous Premium, of course, you get your special link for the discount. But if you go to my Instagram profile, you can find it right there as well and you get free shipping. So if you're not a member of Premium, you still get free shipping. So check that out. Shirts and racerback tanks are available. And I'll have another shirt release in a couple days. So stay tuned because uh, dropping crazy fucking bombs on the apparel store. Make sure you jump on that right away. So today's episode, big lifts for big arms. Now, one of the things that we all like to talk about, or I get a lot of questions, how do I get bigger arms? How do I get bigger biceps? How do I get bigger triceps? Even things like how do I get a bigger chest? How do I get a bigger back? You know, how do you get bigger? How do you get bigger? Well, if you watch my episodes, you know that it's not just one muscle you have to grow. You don't just focus on your chest if you want to grow chest. You don't just focus on biceps if you want biceps. You have to focus on macro muscle groups. You have to focus on compound movements. You have to focus on the global system. You have to focus on how you're eating all day, every day as as a larger piece of the pie, how are you training as a larger piece of the pie? So it's not just I want bigger arms, let me do curls until I pass out, let me do triceps extensions until I pass out. It's about how you are combining bigger lifts with those smaller lifts. Because in reality, you have compound movements, which are multiple joints, so you have your shoulder and your elbow for things like a row and for a bench press, and then you have isolation exercises like a bicep curl or a tricep extension which just work around one joint maybe another for a stabilization a joint like a shoulder but you're really working the elbow joint by itself so you have compound movements which are multiple joint two or more and then you have isolation exercises which is single joint exercise now single joint exercises are great because they isolate that body part that you want for example the biceps or the triceps which is what we're talking about here that's all well and good but those are small muscle groups and it's very hard to grow them size-wise. 
size-wise by doing isolation. You need to think of the body as a system. So what grows muscle in the body? Testosterone, growth hormone. The endocrine system in the body is what helps trigger the repair and the growth and the rebuilding of muscle tissue. If you are doing smaller muscle groups, if you're trying to build your biceps by training your biceps, if you're trying to grow your triceps by training specifically your triceps, you're going to be very disappointed because these muscles don't respond exceptionally well to just isolation training. It's not that simple where you just, okay, let me work that and that's gonna get bigger. The body is a system and everything is interconnected and everything's intertwined. It's called intermuscular coordination, it's called intermuscular interaction, not just intramuscular um, coordination interaction. It's not just the activation of the muscle fibers in that muscle, it's the interaction of muscle fibers and the neural fibers, motor units across muscle groups. And that's where that integration aspect comes into play. It's like isolating your glutes that we talked about the other day and then integrating it for a squat. So things like the bench press are important. Macro pushing movements like a bench press are important. Uh, doing things like a barbell row are very important. And not just even for multiple muscle groups, but for the system in the repair mode as a whole, you are increasing your testosterone production by working larger muscle groups and macro movements because you are stimulating the need for your body to repair more muscle. You're increasing your body's endorphins, you're increasing epinephrine, you're increasing a lot of hormones and the release of, for just a layman's term, a release of energy. It takes a lot more force and effort to coordinate and to go hard on a, for example, a barbell row than it does, or a, you know, a weighted pull-up than it does on a bicep curl. You're outputting more effort. And to make it simple and not get too scientific, I'm trying to talk around it because it does get very, it does get very detailed on a, on like an endocrine level, on a hormone level. But when you are doing isolation, you're taking a little tiny piece of the pie. You're focusing on a very, very, very tiny muscle group. And as a result, you're getting the repair and the repair effects of a very small muscle group. So instead of repairing on a massive scale, your body is repairing on a very, very minor scale. So if you're trying to build your biceps, if you're trying to build your triceps, it is exceptionally and exceedingly important that you are training large muscle groups. Deadlift. If you're not deadlifting and you're trying to get big arms, you're missing out. Benching or chest pressing, if you're not trying, if you're not doing a lot of chest pressing heavy and you're trying to get big arms, you're missing out. If you are trying to get big biceps, shoulders, and you're not doing barbell rows, you're missing out. Now, does it mean that you can't get big without these exercises? Of course not. But they're very functional, they're free weight, they put a lot of stress on the core and on the motor units and the neural muscular system as a whole, that neuromuscular system triggers what's known as motor units. And these are nerve fibers and nerve pathways that trigger muscle contraction. When you're looking for strength, when you're looking to hit larger muscle groups, when you're looking to output a lot of force, output a lot of effort, internal force to overcome an external force, you are hitting, triggering, targeting more of those nerve cells, more of those motor units when you train heavy, when you train macro exercises. It's a combination of rep scheme and rest time, of course, for hypertrophy to flush the most blood into the area for muscle size. But hypertrophy and muscle size is also a component. What's a component of hypertrophy is also strength. So do you need to be the strongest person in the world to be the biggest person in the world? No. Do you need to be, do you have, like, the concept of strength and hypertrophy, they cross over, it's like a Venn diagram. 
So just because you're strong doesn't mean you're gonna be absolutely massive. You don't need to be able to bench 600 pounds in order to look like you can bench 600 pounds. That's my point. But the fact of the matter remains that in order to maximize your ability, and this if you have the results you want, if you're happy with what you have or what you're getting based on your output, that's a whole other thing. But if you're trying to stimulate and get the most out of your body and you're not doing larger movements, you're not doing deadlifts, you're not doing Romanian deadlifts, RDLs, you're not working a lot of muscle groups, major muscle groups synergistically, if you're not doing bench press, barbell rows, weighted pull-ups or just heavy, you know, pull-ups to failure, if you're not doing macro muscles, major movement muscles, lats, uh, you're working all the muscles of your traps, you're not working the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, but on a synergistic level, then you are missing out on your the repair functions that get released into the bloodstream. Now where I'm going with all of this, this whole entire time, that was a loud bird, is when your body's repairing, when your body is releasing testosterone, your body's creating testosterone to repair muscle tissue that's broken down, when your body is releasing growth hormone to help repair the tissue, that gets released into the bloodstream. It doesn't just go to where the body needs it. It goes everywhere. So if you're trying to get big arms, but you're training your legs really hard, this is why never skipping leg day helps you get big all over. If you're training your legs hard, those hormones that help you rebuild muscle tissue, those hormones that help you repair, get sent into the bloodstream and get circulated throughout the entire body. So neglecting half your body, neglecting major muscle groups, neglecting big body parts, you are severely limiting yourself. You're severely limiting your ability to repair and to grow and to develop everywhere. So big lifts, that's a general phrase. But deadlifts, squats, stiff leg deadlifts, pull-ups, barbell rows, bench pressing, macro movements that use multiple joints are extremely important for those small synergists. You wanna get big posterior deltoid? Yes, you have to isolate. But can you imagine the combination? Because when you don't have a muscle that's activating, like the glutes aren't activating properly, or the posterior deltoid, we've talked about building the small muscle of the shoulder, or the posterior deltoid is not activating properly. If you can isolate that with certain movements and turn them on and get the body to start firing those muscles, and then you start doing these big macro multi-joint movements, then those smaller muscles are now firing. So what you're doing by effect, like we talked about yesterday or two days ago, you're activating and then you're integrating. You're turning the muscle on and then you're putting it together in the bigger piece of the puzzle. So it's very important to have these muscles firing. That's why corrective exercise and isolation is very important but in combination with those heavier macro moves. So if you want big arms, you need big lifts. You need big lifts. Do not go to the gym thinking you're gonna get big arms by cur just by curling. If you're skinny and you're trying to get big arms, you're just gonna go to the gym and you think, hey, I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna do triceps extensions. Yeah, you might get sore in your triceps, but what are you integrating? What are you building? What are you tying those triceps in with? Are you breaking down a large enough muscle to demand a major repair? But if you were to combine, let's say you did deadlifts, and your body's repairing from deadlifts, and squats during the week, and barbell rows, and you're also throwing in triceps extensions and other smaller isolation, your body's repairing on a global macro level with major muscle trauma, I should say major muscle trauma, but major muscle groups and that micro trauma that you're getting from weight training on a big scale, on that integrated scale, and then you start seeing a lot of change. Plus you get a lot of this, these different aspects from big exercises. You get, like from deadlifts, you get that thickness, you get that thick 3D look, you get that density. You know, you're, you get a, it's hard to explain, but you know when you see someone, you know when you see someone that lifts, you know when you see someone that goes to the gym, and then you see someone that fucking looks strong. They look different, they look big, all the muscles are proportioned because they integrate their muscles. They do bigger movements that hit multiple muscles. They don't just go to the gym and curl. They don't just go to the gym and do like leg extensions. They don't just go and do triceps push downs. They're doing major muscle integrated movements that use multiple joints at the same time that are breaking down muscle synergistic, like, like many at a time and rebuilding many at a time. And they're integrated because they're doing multi-joint movements. I hope I'm making it clear that you need to do both. 
You need to isolate these muscles, but you need to integrate them in the bigger picture because not only are you stimulating the hormones that will build these muscles overall in your entire body, but you are also creating that thickness and getting deep in the tissue and creating that synergy that's gonna give you physique, it's gonna give you more aesthetics, it's gonna give you more of a, more of like a, a strength appeal, like a look to your physique, and then you can also isolate them because I see so many people overtraining small body parts, curling until they pass out, tricep extensions until they pass out. You're working your biceps and your triceps when you're doing chest press, when you're doing back rows, you're doing pull-ups and rows. You're doing the, you're working these accessory muscles. You don't have to work them to death. You need to eat better and work them smarter. You need to focus more on these bigger lifts, especially if you're trying to bulk up. You need to focus on the big lifts and throw in the accessories, but you still have to keep your bullseye on the big lifts. The big lifts are gonna help you grow. Big lifts will help you grow the most. Let me do it, let me take a couple questions. I saw a bunch of things pop up. Leg day twice a week, too much? Uh, leg day twice a week is not too much, depends on how much volume you're doing, what your goals are, what your experience, what you're doing on each day. Um, I wouldn't do it like Monday, Wednesday, but a lot of people find success doing like a Monday, Thursday or a Monday, Friday. Um, doing two or three days between, depends. Like I just did legs yesterday, I am sore as shit. But you know, if you're doing yoga and a lot of recovery, you might be good. Some people are good in two or three days. I, for one, usually need a little bit, a couple days more sometimes, depends. Uh, depends on how hard you go, how many sets you did, you know, that kind of stuff. You can't spot grow muscle just like you can't spot reduce body fat. Uh, yeah, not, not, not as true as the body fat comment, really. I mean, I wouldn't say you could spot grow muscle like, oh, let me just work that and grow that. You, you can definitely break down muscle and build muscle in one area. You can because your body will respond to that. But what you can't do is just teach your body to take fat from that one area. So you can build muscle. That's why, you know, tennis players, one arm will be bigger than the other because they use one all the time. So you can actually grow muscle in specific areas and grow strength and grow endurance based on the output, based on the activity that you're doing. Um, so it works more for muscle in that sense. But, you know, because if I just do curls on my right arm all day, I'll grow my right arm. So it's not really, that wouldn't be accurate to say it's not, that those are the same thing. But my point is that you will get a different development if you're doing a macro movement like a back row or a pull up in addition and focusing on that hardcore if you're trying to get big arms more than put the focus on just doing the curl. And that's the problem is that when people want bigger arms, they go more towards arm training and they pay less attention to doing back rows heavy or chest press and doing those heavy movements and developing those even more and heavier and harder. They focus more on the isolation movements. That's my point. People want big arms, they start focusing too much on doing the arms to get big arms, whereas they should be focusing on the big compound lifts more and still doing the arms. You know, they're going about it a different way. They're going towards the isolation, whereas you really need to focus more on the macro movements that are gonna get you big as, as a whole. Treat you like a machine, absolutely. Good, thank you so much for joining me for episode 329 of the most muscular podcast in the realm, the daily fucking swole, because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. Episode 329 was lit like a tit. Thank you for joining me for all of these amazing fucking knowledge nukes here every day at 12 noon Eastern time, live on Facebook, at Swolenormous, obviously, because you're watching me. Thanks for watching on YouTube, at Swolenormous, and listening to the SoundCloud and iTunes podcast. Check out Swolenormous Apparel. I will put a link in the description and also in the comments below. Kegel shirts, men's tees, and women's Razorback tanks just went on sale today. Premium, you know you get your awesome discount if you're a member of Premium. If you're not a member of Premium, you could sign up for the seven-day free trial of Swanormous Premium. Click the link in the description of this post. And also, Premium, I'll see you in a little bit for a nutrition Q&A uh, in uh, Swanormous Premium. So thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your Flex Friday. I'm about to go post a sweet, nasty Flex Friday post in premium right now. Oh, oh, oh. And stay tuned for the next announcement for the next t-shirt release. Go grab your Kegel shirt now. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Deuce, 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 deuce. <laughs>